Hi, it's Dr. Z. In this video, I will be reviewing variance and standard deviation. By the end of this video, you will be able to describe the relationship between variance and standard deviation, and then apply the definitional method of these two concepts to complete a practice problem. Please feel free to pause the video at any time to take notes. Variability is the degree to which scores in a distribution or a data set are spread out. There are two measures of variability, variance and standard deviation. Let's break down standard deviation into its parts. The word standard refers to the average or the mean of a data set. The term deviation refers to how scores deviate from the mean or how far away the score is from the mean. From this definition, we need to calculate deviation scores first and then take the average or calculate the mean of these scores to calculate standard deviation. Unfortunately, it's not that easy. This diagram illustrates the relationship between variance and standard deviation. Using the definition of standard deviation that I just discussed, we should first calculate the deviation scores, which is this red Lego, for the data set. However, when we add up the devi deviation scores, which is part of the formula for calculating mean, we always get a total sum of zero because of the negative deviation scores. We reach a dead end and cannot continue. To get rid of a negative score, we actually need to square them. So we then square each deviation score, the blue Lego. This completes one part of the definition of standard deviation, calculating the deviation scores. Now we can continue with the rest of the definition of standard deviation and take the average of the squared deviation scores, which is this green Lego here. This means we sum the squared deviations and then divide by the total number of scores. This is actually called variance, which is the average squared deviation scores, or the mean squared deviation. Now, remember that we want standard deviation, or mean deviation. To get rid of the squared number, we take one step further and square root it. Since variance is the mean squared deviation, we square root the variance to get standard deviation, which is our gray Lego here. According to the diagram, we need to calculate variance first. Here's the formula for variance. It may look a bit overwhelming at first. If we break the formula down into its parts using the order of operations, it will not be so scary. First, the parentheses indicates that we have to subtract the mean from each x-score. The exponent refers to us squaring those scores. The summation, or the Greek letter sigma, indicates that we sum or add those scores together. Finally, we divide by n, or the total number of scores. I would like to summarize the steps in calculating variance. Step 1, calculate the sum of x and the mean for the sample. Step two, calculate the deviation scores. Recall that we add these deviation scores and we always get a sum of zero. To get rid of the negative scores, we move to step three. We square the deviation scores. Step four, we sum the deviation scores. And step five, we divide by n. When you put all those steps together, you have the formula for variance. Recall that we need to calculate variance first in order to calculate standard deviation. Step one, we need to calculate variance using the previous steps. And step two, we square root variance to calculate our standard deviation. When you put the steps together, you have the formula for standard deviation. Now that we we have reviewed the rules and steps to calculating variance and standard deviation. Are you ready to practice your new knowledge? I have one practice example for you to review. 
The lecture example is asking us to calculate the variance for this sample of n equals 5 scores. The scores are 1, 9, 5, 8, and 7. So let's get started. Step 1 is to calculate the sum of x. We will add 1 plus 9 plus 5 plus 8 plus 7 and get 30. We then calculate the mean, which is just the sum of x divided by n. In this case, it is 30 divided by 5, and the mean equals 6. Steps 2 and 3 are best calculated when organized in the following chart. The chart has one column for the deviation scores, which is step 2, and one column for the squared deviation scores, which is step 3. Step 2 requires us to calculate the deviation scores. In other words, we subtract the mean of 6 with every score in the sample. 1 minus 6, 9 minus 6, 5 minus 6, and so forth. Recall that if we sum these deviation scores up, we always get a sum of 0, which is the case here. To get rid of these negative scores, we need to move to step 3. Step 3 is to square the deviation scores. Recall that squaring a negative number results in a positive number. So we get 25 and 1 for these negative squares. Step 4 is to sum those square deviations. So we'll add up 25 plus 9 plus 1 plus 4 plus 1 to equal 40. And finally, step 5 is to divide by n or the total number of scores in the sample. Here, 40 divided by 5 equals 8. In other words, SD squared, or variance, for this sample is 8. Now, we're not done yet. The example continues by asking us to calculate standard deviation for the previous sample. Step 1 is to calculate variance, which we already did in the previous step. Step 2 is to square, the root, or square root the variance. The square root of 8 equals 2.83. In other words, SD equals 2.83. In summary, variance and standard deviation are two ways of measuring variability. In order to calculate standard deviation, one must calculate variance first. Learning how to calculate variance and standard deviation are one of the many LEGO building blocks needed to understand statistics.